You're listening to Unbridled with your host, Genevieve and Carly. Welcome to Unbridled. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is our show Unbridled, and I'm your host, Genevieve. I'm Carly. And we have the wonderful guest, Katie Campbell, on the show today. Hi. So, Katie, how long have you been doing games? So, I just started games back in 2019, actually. Um, I had known about it for a little bit longer than that, but I just got involved midway through college. Did you ride before that? Yeah, so I started riding when I was five. Um, my mom got me lessons through like an English born and I've been riding ever since. Um, but I switched over to games in 2019 and that's pretty much all I've done. I did one hunter jumper show since then and um, obviously no more for reasons. <laughs> but um, yeah. I was so, the same way. I grew up and uh, my mom started me with lessons for hunter jumpers. Yeah. And it's been almost 20 years now. I'll be 25 next year. So <laughs> it gives you a pretty good foundation. I feel like, especially the, like beginner levels on like equitation, how to stay balanced, good hand seat leg. Yeah. And absolutely. then like very quickly change. Forget all of it. <laughs> <laughs> you forget all of it. <laughs> well, like the prettiness of it. Right. You know, yeah. like- <laughs> I always remember going so. back and my uh, event coach, I'd like go and do a games weekend and I come back out on my gray warm blood and I would ride like this and he'd be like, what's with the puppy paws? Yeah. <laughs> Thumbs up. And chicken wing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Meanwhile, my ex coach would put a crop behind my elbow yes. behind my back and I'd sit like this and now I ride like out here. <laughs> I know. Terrible. It's totally different too when you're like super tall or I feel like anytime you're on a condensed pony because the neck compared to being on like a horse or a warm blood, like yeah. you ride totally differently because of how you're encouraging them versus yeah, like absolutely. if I did that to my warm blood, it wouldn't even like reach him. Yeah. <laughs> you have to balance them out differently. Yeah. Pony, yeah. Especially when you're going like at breakneck speed yeah. and then leaning all which ways you just have to like sit completely different than if you're positioned on like <laughs> A massive horse. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes they like I had a sixteen two off the track thoroughbred that like balanced himself, right? Like I yeah. I did no work with that. Um and Baloo just like leans on me for everything. He's like, I don't know how to walk straight, I don't know how to bend <laughs> like and- <laughs> And I'm like, well, I don't either. We're going to try. <laughs> so tell us about Baloo. Where did you get him? How old? How tall? What's he look like? So, so- <laughs> Baloo came into our lives in April of 2019. Um, His history, someone got him from slaughter auction down in Kentucky for like $600 or something like that. And I forget what her name was, but then Jill Jill Belshaw. Belshaw. Yeah. Yeah. So did Jill buy him? She bought him. him? Okay. So I couldn't remember if Jill bought him or someone bought him. So, okay. So Jill bought him and brought him up here, I guess. And he was estimated at the time. I think she got him in 2015 Mm -hmm. or 16 or something like that. Maybe 2017 even. He was estimated to be between like six and eight. Um, And now my dentist says he's like not quite 15. So like it, you know, works out just fine. But he's a leopard Appaloosa POA. So handsome. So cute. Um, I had never seen such a pretty pony in my life, right? When I first saw him for the first time. And um, he had like, because of the, you know, being in slaughter auction and Jill not knowing where he came from. And then Jill was in college. So she leased him out to a couple different people. He had a very rocky and unstable past. So when he came to us, he was like, for a lack of better word, petrified yeah. of everything everyone um and it had like for the longest time I wasn't even sure if I'd be able to do anything with him because I'd take him out I have a ring in my backyard um the house we moved into had it okay it's like I was unreal. like just blow it a little later. you know it's like, literally okay. I my window it's there's a <laughs> ring it's nice like we moved in this house I know this is irrelevant we moved in this house like almost 10 years ago and the reason we moved here was because it had a barn and it had a ring and yeah. it had pasture like it was yeah. perfect yeah. but um so you know when we first got him I brought him out into the ring and he basically tried to kill me the first time like was just 
so like not bad not naughty he was just you could tell he was terrified like shaking all over and it took a lot to even be able to like touch him like in his face or anything and then covid was honestly one of the best things ever happen for his and my relationship because i got kicked out of school right like we got sent home and my parents are doctors so they were working all the time anyway so I had nothing to do with myself um, <laughs> besides ride him. So throughout COVID, we really worked through a lot of like trust things um, and didn't even really do much gaming work. Like it was more of just the basics where, you know, just getting like I would hang out with him and I would like when I had to read my textbooks, I would sit with him or sit on Aww. him and like read my textbook. And then you know, just like it was day in and day out. And that repetition just made all the difference um, in him. And Carly, you were saying in the the snippet of the podcast from I think it was yesterday. um, Jen, you were saying too, like how long it took both your ponies to like, figure it out, basically. Yeah, I feel like just last year, he finally figured it out after a year of COVID of nothing but practicing and getting to trust me. And then 2021 of like implementing that into competitions. And then with that second year, he was like, Oh, now I get it. And then, yeah. you know, with this year was a whole different ballpark, but it takes but yeah. so much time. And I think people don't, we get so hyper focused on like our sport and our performance in our sport that I don't think we step back all the time and think, well, I really do have to, like, they're my teammate. I have to build yeah. that trust and like that relation and the communication too. Yeah. And like drilling the time into it to get better at those different things, particularly when you have a fearful horse, like, um, and Appaloosas in general, I had Ruben, uh, he was a really cool leopard Appaloosa that I'd gotten. He was like 14, three hands, a couple, well, it was like 10 years ago now. He was petrified when I got him though, obviously mm-hmm. very, very abused. And it just takes so long because I swear like Appaloosas never forget anything ever. No. Everything good or everything bad that has ever happened to them, their entire life is there. <laughs> like, <laughs> You know, the thing that's like smooth brain, the ridges and lumps, valleys and bumps. <laughs> I say Baloo has a smooth brain because like sometimes he's so just not there. But like, <laughs> there's too many ridges and lumps. Like, like you're saying, like he forgets nothing, yeah. right? Oh. Like, <laughs> if I give him two cookies instead of three, because for some reason, like I'm superstitious like that in ways. Like, I have to give him three treats before I compete, or then like after. Like, I don't know why. If I don't give him three for whatever reason, like if I'm not paying attention or if I, they're not there, which rarely happens, but it has. He like he's mad. Like he like will look he like in my hands the other one. <laughs> And I'm like, you That's remember so that, but like, you don't remember that you've popped a balloon 17 times yesterday and now you're scared of it. Like, okay. <laughs> <Be for real. laughs> no, it's, it's like, so, so do you do like any treat training with him or just treats before or after? I tried to like treat him. Yeah. It just didn't like, I don't know if I'm just not doing it right. Or like, if he just does not care, like it, he doesn't associate things that well, I think, um, but, too. So no, Hero just, like could care less. Like he just wants to go to work. Yeah. Fizz, on the other hand, like he is motivated, motivated for treats. Like he would do anything for a treat. He's ridiculous. He will chase you in the field. He's like one of those yeah. horses that <laughs> probably be a good Liberty horse. Like, cause he's like, ah, yeah. oh, super engaged for a treat. And Hero's like, dude, I just want to hang out. <laughs> like, yeah. That's how Remington is. He just runs around in the field and just chases me afterwards. So I'll give him all my cookies. And then I'm just like, okay, we're done. Bye. Have a good yeah. day. And like, I'm leaving. He follows me all the way back to the gate, which is like so cute, though. three plus acres, <laughs> like all the way back and then stands at the gate until I drive away and then turns around oh and walks God. away. I know. Breaks my heart he every day. you. I know. <laughs> So did you come into games when you got Baloo or were you riding in games before that? What was like your first experience into games? So when we moved here um, in 2013, I met Elise Barbera. We went to mm-hmm. high school together. And Elise and I, like almost immediately upon meeting each other, became best friends because we were like the only horse girls in the school. Yeah. And um she was always telling me like, oh, I do mounted games. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Like I jump, you know, and she had done, she's done everything under the sun. Right. And, um, and it's not that I ever like inquired her about what it was because I did. And I very well knew what it was. We just never like, for whatever reason, had the conversation of like, 
me saying I wanted to try games or her asking if I wanted to try it. It just never happened for whatever reason. Over all of high school and, you know, almost two years into college. And then my sister actually got involved with, like, asked Elise um, if she could get into games. So then my sister got into games 2018, I think. Yeah, 2018. Yeah. Um, and then my parents got involved like later that season. And then my mom calls me at college and says, you know, why haven't you been doing this forever? Like Elise has been around, you know, for years. Why haven't you done this? And at the time it, I just like, I was, I really enjoyed, I was doing IEA and like the hunter jumpers and, um, I also played sports. So I just n- didn't, for like, God knows why. Right. I just didn't get involved, but, um, we got Baloo because I had a 162, you know, thoroughbred and couldn't do games with him. So Michaela got Winnie or Malibu from Sophie, Sophie. And then, yeah, and our other horses from other people. Charlie was an ex-barrel racer um, that we bought for my dad. And he already had, like, Jim Connor in him, so it was fine. And my dad's tall, so he needed the taller horse anyway. But then my parents found Baloo. And we're like, we, I was at college and my mom was like, we found you a pony. And I like had no idea that they were even like looking or anything. Um, like on a, we got him on a free lease and everything. So then I came home in April and I think June, there was some pairs competition in June, I think at Mullica Hill. That, mm-hmm. by, that was my first pairs competition on him. Like not even that much. That's crazy. Later. Yeah. He's and such a cool was, pony too. He's awesome. <laughs> He's the best. No, it's so lucky. So, and when you, you just like for a descriptor here, because we've got leopard up loose. So it's like a black yeah. leopard, right? That's kind of my horses. He's yeah. like this really cool, like not, he's not a gray because he's not really graying out, but he almost looks like he's a gray leopard. Yeah. He's like, so he, like my vet for the longest time didn't know what to put him down as, like on his coggins and everything. She's like, he's an appy, but he's not like a, you're, He's not a regular appy. He is a leopard appy, but he's not, like, you can't see his spots that well. Exactly. Like, they're yeah. so, he's, like, mashed potato-y and gravy. Like Swiss like, cheese or Yeah, <laughs> like, it's not, like, spots, right? Like, it's just all, um, so, yeah, he's more of, like, a, it's almost, like, strawberry brownish looking sometimes. And then yeah. when I clip him, though, then you can, re- like, then he really does look yeah. more appy. But right now with his, like, fat fluff coming in, like, you can hear, like, he looks gray out in the field. Like, He's so cool. So. <laughs> he does have cool markings. I've never seen a pony like him before. So when I saw him, I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to have the prettiest pony in the whole world. <laughs> And it's one of the really cool things about that, like coloring too. Like I love Appaloosas because they're honestly like – they're like thumbprints. They're all different, like so yeah. different. And in my hunter-jumper world growing up in of, uh, you know, however many years I rode in that, it's all bays yeah. and flea bit and grays and there's nothing wrong with that. But like that's – you never see like a paint. Like you, you would never see a Remy, you know what I mean, in like the hunter ring. You just don't. Yeah. So – to, to join games and see just the the mix of horses and where they come from, you know, and they, and they look cool, right? Like, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> it's like, I feel like our sport gravitates to color, like, so much more color than a lot of equestrian sports. Yes. Like, yes. we're like the crazy ones. We Like, we use knee-high socks versus half chaps. A lot of riders do. So people who yeah. don't aren't super familiar with mounted games, you wouldn't usually use, like, tall boots or even half chaps because they're kind of heavier if you're vaulting. You're going to use, like, those knee-high socks. But people get crazy with it. Like, their color yeah. schemes and getting the team garb together (laughs) it's all like neon and I love that everybody matches like the teams match but all teams look different and like it's just so different you know and and one thing I wanted to mention that I loved about games and why I've now stuck with that instead of because I love jumping like I just jumped blue the other day because I just love that that feeling. feeling that I'm like flying right but I love games because I don't need the $150, you know, shirt and the $400 jacket and the $120 pants and the $800 boots. Like my boots that I use are consignment boots. So someone had them before and grew out of them, right? They're like a kid's four. Okay. I got them for 40 bucks at our consignment shop. 
And I would have never been able to wear that. Like I could have, you know, lessened in them, but I wouldn't have ever been able to compete in them. Yeah. And then I wear like $12 leggings from Walmart. Right. And my right. middle school field day shirt, like, and nobody cares. <laughs> exactly. Like right. half the time awesome. I'm in my workout leggings, you know, like your Amazon, like leggings you can get, you don't have to pay for expensive gear to even start. No. And nobody looks at you you know, negatively because of it. Whereas in, at least in my experience, you know, yeah. I don't want to talk as a whole, but my experience in the hunter jumper world, I had friends that had hundred thousand dollar horses and tailored sportsmen's and granted I had tailored sportsmen's, but I got them at the consignment shop and, you know, and, and people know that. So like they, you know, they just look at you differently. I didn't have my own horse until I moved here. You know, we didn't have the luxury of being able to buy one or, take care of one or have one, you know, uh, pay for boarding somewhere. So I always felt behind, even when I I would, you know, I, I tried my hardest, I would work out and go to lessons and I would try to improve here and there where I could, but I could only go to one lesson a week. And I just never had a shot compared to anybody else in the world who was going even twice a week, let alone the people that owned their horses and were going every day. So in games, it's cool that some of us have, you know, the $600 slaughter auction horses, and then yep. some of us have backyard free horses, and then some of us have X, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sorry, you have some X race horses. Oh my gosh. X and then you've got horses. people like breeding their own Connemaras that have these yeah. beautiful, like $20,000 yeah. horses side by side with your $600 like auction pony. Yeah, and no right. one looks down at you. Like we're all no. out there and it's about right. Like how well do they mesh? How well do they contribute to the team? How, yeah. how well are they like developing? Like that is so cool compared, like you're saying, to really any other equestrian sport. Like I even think of eventing is pretty relaxed compared to some of the other sports, but you still need your custom saddle or you need yeah. your air vest or your regular vest. I mean, all of it adds up and it's it's like thousands of dollars just to get involved. Yeah, yeah it was insane trying to find a saddle to fit my thoroughbred and then thank God I ended up paying a little bit more because I got the one with like an interchangeable tree and that was worth the money, right? Cause I can yeah. use it across many different horses. It fits blue. And then I ended up getting, I have a synthetic one that I got at a consignment shop <laughs> um, and it fit in perfect. I had no idea if it would, but it was a hundred bucks. And I said, oh, I'll find someone who can use it if I can't. And it fits in fine anyway. And like, it's, it's awesome. I I like that, you know, I like not spending a lot of money, right? Because I don't have a lot of money. I am a grad student. Um, <laughs> yeah, girl, I'm right I, there with you. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, the fact that I can still participate yeah. in a positive manner in, like, in games with not, not having these big fancy things is awesome. And it's still cool to see the people that have the big fancy things. And I'm like, oh. I've seen that breastplate. That's a cool one. I want yeah. to save for that one one day. Or like right. the Beamer blankets and everything. I'm like, oh, I want one of those. But what's great about that is everybody shares. Like everybody's exactly. so nice and willing to like lend XYZ to people. Yeah. So that goes back it. to like everybody in games is just like your big family. You know what I mean? Yeah. And everybody comes and shares everything. And, you know, yeah. just that's how you meet people. And how we all like we've all become so connected like to think that I met Elise right and we became friends and then my parents got it my sister got involved my parents got involved I get involved and then you know I meet you Carly and I then now I'm taking ASL classes because you introduced me to it and everything and like yeah it, it's just neat how stuff like that works and you know and then Carl and Kristen don't live far from us I've gone over to their house and the Najis don't live far from us and like we, we hang out like sometimes like it's cool to like see people and then my parents work with Kristen gravely like at the hospital sometimes oh, no right way. and oh. then there's someone down the street from us who knows Patty Naji. I don't know remember how but it's like <laughs> such a small world you know yeah, we're yeah. all over the place but we've all become so close and interconnected and intertwined and I just it, I, it gives like a sense of like belonging that I never had in any other like discipline you know I people was from like 
so many different walks of life too. And what's really cool is like watching new generations of riders like get a little bit older, graduating college. And you've got people now that have so many different like crazy life experiences and jobs. Like they've just kind of moved out into different spheres. And then you end up still connected just because of horses, just because yep. we have like this common thing with games. We've got people who are doctors, people in business, people who are interpreters. Like you've got so many different gamuts of job and experience. And it's so cool because now we can almost leverage that back into the organization, right? Yep. And just keep growing as a community. And like lean off each other with certain yeah. things. And yeah, and like awesome. you said, like learning from each other, like that's so cool because there's so many, yeah. even just talking to Greg, like, because I am not mechanically inclined, like, I don't know. I was just thinking, I was just <laughs> thinking about Greg, Greg. <laughs> you were saying that, yes. We love Greg. <laughs> and he, but he does, like, we're out there and we're competing and if there's any issue with, like, the live feed, like, he's just so, he's just technically inclined. It makes sense to him. And he's so kind and generous with his time too and like he's like jumps off the horse he's got a helmet on and he runs over to the side and he's like helping to fix the, the feed so that they can Mid measure like too sometimes yeah, he's literally. like oh, we'll be right there like hold <laughs> on and he just finishes, finishes and he gets off and runs <laughs> oh he's so awesome but like that that's what we have as an organization and it's so cool and it's what we need to keep almost being protective over you know people yeah. being able to connect like that and also like I was thinking about it too like you had mentioned like working out and I'm into fitness I know Carly you are too but what is so cool is that compared to disciplines like hunters we really are very inclusive as an organization like people yep. of all different ages people of all different sizes like you don't mm -hmm. see a lot of judgment out there on the field compared to hunters where you have a very you have an image that you're really trying to attain and very often it's kind of unattainable once you oh, get out of school. It's so <laughs> negative in a in a physical and like mental and emotional way. Absolutely. Yeah. Like I was 12 years old, right? And I'm only five feet tall. So like I already have a disadvantage in that world. Um, and I remember literally being like 12 years old and we're trying on, we're all, all of us were like trying on different jackets to see what like, how many buttons we needed and like the color that looked best on us and everything and like noticing that these other girls and i'm small right but like other taller girls had s smaller jackets than mm -hmm. i did and then being told that like that's half the reason why i don't do as well because i'm not as long torso to hit the four yep. buttons and like I'm not as because I'm short torsoed. I don't I don't look like as skinny as the other tall girls with the long legs. And I'm like, really? Does that? Yeah. And that and being 12 years old, like I didn't know it then, but looking back now, I'm like that just perpetuates such a negative. I like it sticks with you. Around. Yeah. Yeah. There's times still ne like even now, just because that's the way I grew up. Like even now, I find myself sometimes just like thinking that I'm like, oh, like do I look like when I put on my riding pants and they're they're a little tight after you know the winter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh man, like what's going on? And I'm like, I can still vault up on my pony and you know, he's still fat enough to carry me. So like, it's all fun well. Like, <laughs> like it's, it's a way nice. at the end of the day. No, it's the same. Like I'm, you know, being super tall, it's the same thing. Like you kind of are like, well, I had been told in the past when I did Hunter, same thing. Like you aren't lean enough for your composure, mm -hmm. like composition. You aren't on a tall enough horse for your composition. Like yep. I love that I can ride because I always wanted a pony and I was always like told you can't have a pony because you're too tall. You have to have something yeah. at least like 16, three plus. And now like my pony is 14 hands and he's just a beefcake. Like he's everything to me because yeah. like, <laughs> it's so fun, <laughs> but nobody yeah, judges you for that too. Yeah, exactly. And there's no um, like negative health. Yeah. I don't even really know what I'm trying to say. You can no, cut but like out. Okay, you're right. <laughs> like, no, when we're all out in the arena, though, I just feel like people are genuinely interested more in how much fun you're having, how successful you are in handling that moment and the obstacles in that moment. I won't even say in doing the skills because sometimes it all gets messed up, right? But yeah. how do you handle it? How do you correct it? Like, mm -hmm. and what people... do you do differently from the time before? Exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. that's the focus, not like how do you look in a picture? And like half the time, I feel like on the rainy, rainy days where it's like you got photographers out there, it's like cooler just people with the grit, like with the mud smeared on their face and they're just yeah. like running home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or just like that rough and tumble kind of sport. And I yeah, love it. It's awesome. It's, it's not about like looking pretty in any way, shape, or form. It's just about, like you said, being a team and working together and you know, either doing it as, as fast as you can or as accurately as you can, like depending on what you're doing. And 
you know, like, no, I'm never going to be as fast as other people who have been doing it for, you know, years longer than I have, but it doesn't matter because I don't have to be as fast as them. Cause if I'm quicker getting on or off, or if I'm more accurate in my put downs or my pickups, like that's that extra step. Exactly. So, you know, there's so many different moving parts that you don't have to be good at one thing, you know, or flip side of the same coin. Like if you're bad at one thing, it doesn't matter because there's right. so many different moving parts. Exactly. Right. You can just focus on something else. Like for me, vaulting was my struggle for so long and it still is hard, but I'm getting somewhere. But you could also focus on like all these other skill sets and getting better at them so that you could just sit those races. And then if yeah. it's an emergency, fine, we deal with it. But you're still an asset to a team while you're developing yourself in other ways. Yeah. Like, so anyway, I was thinking about that and I was like, all right, so what is your favorite skill set to kind of play when you're out there? So I oddly, I love bottle pickups. I hate yes. the put downs. Yes. <laughs> I'm not there with you. <laughs> reason, like, and I've been taught so many different ways of like putting it down, you know, like, like holding it this way and like holding it that way or holding it like this, like. I've been taught all the ways, right? Like, for whatever reason, <laughs> I still like just putting it down like this. I don't know. Me too. The first yeah. way, <laughs> the first way Elise taught me how to do it. All this, I have so much thanks, like, to Elise. Like, I, I still love her dearly. Um, and I wouldn't have a lot if it wasn't for her with this, especially. And, like, all the first things she taught me, like, I still do. Like, even there's people who are like, this would be better. I'm like, mm, well, this works for me. And that's okay, <laughs> hey, right? Like, I don't yeah. think works for everybody, but put downs are not my favorite, but the pickups, like, it took me a while to learn the way to like, especially because of my height and Baloo's height, cause he's only like 13, one ish. Um, like my foot will hit the barrel. So I have to really S turn it. You know, I can't just run at it straight to also get close enough. Cause my arms are short. Like, but the pickup is just, I go so fast. I never run that fast in any other race than bottle like when i and especially when i go to pick it up on and i always play last uh the fourth position yep. and um just that pickup is my favorite and i like i guess a lot of put downs i love fly like two fly even though i haven't really been good at, th at it this year for whatever reason i still love it um and it's mainly just like and i i actually don't I'm trying to think why i didn't really think about why i like it so much i feel I'm like sorry. when you get flag like the two flag kind of set downs like it's such an, a feat i don't know why yeah. it doesn't yeah. matter if i practice so it all satisfied. year <laughs> you're just like i did that <laughs> yeah. well when the um staffordshire team came over from england and I, I became like really close with them i still like snapchat them and stuff and um we like follow each other on instagram and everything but they were saying they were amazed at like our equipment and how different it was and more complicated than theirs is back home they were telling me like their flags are short their flags their cones are shorter, shorter. yeah yeah so the 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 space that you have to aim is wider like yeah. ours they were saying are a good four inches taller like our cup yeah. cones yeah so that made me feel awesome because i'm watching them just like run amok right like they're nuts the way <laughs> they're they killing ride. it <laughs> like i was feeling bad about myself and the day before they came i was feeling great right so they come and I'm like, wow, I suck. And then, you know, they tell me, they're like, wow, how do you do that? And then I feel awesome, right? Because I'm yeah. like, that's a difficult one to begin with. And like, yeah, it's just neat. But I guess put downs, I really like, you know, put, put that's half the games is putting down and picking up, right? That's like <laughs> most of so it. But when you but... put them down, when you put any materials down, do you do like a cut before it or like your S turn or I, do you just I go for it? To. I have to make a cut. And People will say, Beth Bradley Johnson especially, will tell me that I shouldn't make these S turns and that I'm capable of doing it at head on. I think it's just a me confidence thing. Um, I need that extra second, like, to make sure I have it. Like, I have to convince myself that I can do it, even though I subconsciously, like, I do it all the time and I know I can do it. The moment I step into the competition ring, and especially now being in an open this year, my first year of being an open, um, I'm like, oh man, I'm going to be the weak link across all the teams, right? Like I'm going to be the last one out there every time. I'm going to mess up everything. I'm not going to be as fast as everybody. That so I take real. that. <laughs> yeah, God, it's yeah. awful. I, I need that extra second of like a little S turn. Like, yeah. 
And it just gives it gives Baloo a check of like, okay, I'm not just barreling home because he loves to do that, which is why I love bottle pickup so much. Um, <laughs> but just that extra second to really like, I almost like feel like I bring myself up to put down, and I need that just like that arc almost. Um, it's so like I'm that pause and momentum flat. that like yeah, yeah I, I need that. Yep. I cannot do it on the fly. If I put like a, the toolbox down it slides or if I put the association box down it slides because I I'm not going up and down like I'm trying to I'm getting it straight on because of how short I am yeah like I'm right my foot is right at the base of that the top of that barrel right like it is right underneath that by a hair so my arm being stretched out is not that far off so I need a little bit of a an arc there to get that confidence in me blue probably if someone else got on him could do it no problem <laughs> yeah I need the I need the second so do you do do you do leaning skills or do you vault for things like quoits where you could get it out of a bucket let's say so I a lot of the time I can get it out of the bucket um I can't get anything off the ground yet still blue doesn't drop his shoulder a whole lot I'm trying to like get him I don't know exactly how to get him to do that because I've tried all of, like the bending techniques and everything that I know from my past w- growing up um and he just doesn't just doesn't drop his shoulder as well so I really have to launch myself to like get low so I can get it with quoits um sometimes you know but I will get off and vault a lot of the time um but I attempt every time at least once to like get it up for quotes to get it out of the bucket now i was just thinking that's i guess the one like silent blessing i've got like go-go gadget arms they're so long. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's why i love being on your team for handoffs i like i never have to worry whether or not genevieve's gonna get it like even if like i have no steering on my pony and the pony's just like going all the way out i just know like if i stick my hand out like far enough yeah genevieve will just like snatch it from me even though we're like miles apart i'm just like <laughs> i have to will get it <laughs> I feel like sometimes I get it right on the tip of my fingers. I'll be ready like 20 minutes early, it feels like sometimes. I'm like, I probably look like an idiot sitting here with my arm out like this, right? (laughs) But like, it's because I have to like, I'm looking down my arm to aim and I want to give, you know, my teammate who's coming into me like plenty of time to aim. And, you know, sometimes I just drop it because that that happens but sometimes it just i feel it literally get whatever oh, I'm it's hitting just on. like that miss on, yeah. a bottle a flag you know Ugh. whatever it is will just literally hit the edge of my fingers i'm like oh go on now i gotta get off no <laughs> breaking do you feel like you had any challenges with vaulting because 13 one all right i mean it's not tall tall but if you are petite it still is a substantial pony like i get to think about like the armpit rule and stuff and i'm looking yeah. out with a 14 hand did pony. you vault before games or I've does never i have to teach you how to do that at least taught me how okay um yeah so I... what was the process like since it's fresh for you like so past couple least... of years Elise taught me first just like how to run next to a pony with the intention of then like getting on it right so having my arm over him and I can't really have my arm like over and down I'm just like like this it's almost uphill a little bit because I'm only five feet tall so like I am on a good day so like I (laughs) have to I'm like I'm stretched to get over him right so I actually don't really even put my arm over him I more put my hand on I have the pommel um, right or do you have a strap yes I have a strap that I don't even use to like pull myself up I just have it there to know like where to put my hands like I'll feel that leather because I have a synthetic saddle so I feel the leather and I'm like okay I'm in the right spot um, but she told me just to run next to him and like all these big hops and skips as I'm running. And um, then she taught me how to standing vault first to get that movement of swinging my leg up and over um, mm-hmm. and just getting confident then with that, which was really hard to do while he's just standing there because, he, you know, get I get no help from him of it's all my pushing and some pulling if I don't make it up all the way. Um, and not that he helps me that much anyway, but like when they're in motion, obviously it's a lot easier because, you know, an object in motion tends to stay in motion, right? Like there's a lot of physics in mounted games. People probably don't realize that. But like <laughs> I make those connections. So um, 
she taught me the standing vault and then actually used a mounting block um facing me so like the short step facing me and i had him walk next to me and then i would like climb up it quick and swing my leg over right okay and we did it trotting and she was like all right now skip skip one of the steps start on the second step step push and jump your like swing your leg cool. over and jump and then from there she put me on like a lead line decanter and just you know and then in the turn it's a lot easier because he is dropping a little bit right and then from there she basically just um bullied me until i figured it out and <laughs> I think, but that's like the best way to go about it you know what i mean um and then i've had a lot of help from other people too of you know i i pulled a little bit too much and it's because i'm short and i don't have that arm over so then i had advice from i think jen you gave me advice my first year in novice when I was trying to vault you were like oh you're so close but you gotta push more with your legs like it's not a pull yeah I was like I know that but like it doesn't I don't know it doesn't feel right like that exactly like, I feel like I have to pull myself up and as I've gotten faster and then more confident in my abilities and I've been training legs more at the gym I can push more <laughs> and get yep. up and it's awesome yep. it makes the difference no, it definitely does. And I think that I'm, you look at guys vaulting and I feel like it's an upper body thing. I don't know, but they're they just, just like float. so powerful that they just sort of float and they anchor themselves and they're fine. I'm I feel like it every time. <laughs> I don't know how they do it. Like what, where did the moon shoes come from? <laughs> like, but so for strange. us, yeah, I, I feel like we have to be very intentional. And I know like even in Kimmy's interview, she was saying like, you have to be really intentional about choosing to jump, like go yeah. through the motions in your head so that you actually do like all the steps. Cause I think in that moment, we kind of usually just like fixate on the feel and usually do half yeah. of the motion until yeah. it's habit. <laughs> I feel like jumping helps. Few, yeah. There's been very few times I have started my vault where like I, I just pushed off and it feels right, right? Like yeah. it feels effortless. Yes. That rarely happens. The only time it happens is if I like, I like kind of double jump, right? Like with both mm -hmm. my feet and then push off with my left while sim simultaneously swinging my right. Yeah. Um, It's weird. I don't know why I do it that way. Makes sense. But like, it looks kind of weird when you like break it down now. Everyone's like, why do you, how do you do that? I don't know. Um. But um. <laughs> But you get in the saddle, so what does it matter? <laughs> exactly. Sometimes, sometimes. But, like, it has to be that the perfect push. And Baloo has to be, at least for me, like, getting into a canner. Yeah, the like, right place of the canner. Yeah. Yes. Like, if he's cantering and I'm trying to jump, like, I'm on his butt, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, I won't get it. And if he's trotting, then I find myself having to pull up more because yeah. I, didn't, I don't have that swing of him pulling me forward yeah, enough, yeah. right? So... There's very few times that like I feel that it was, you know, you get up, you're like, damn, that was good. Like that I one somebody feeling got a when it of just that. works. Yeah, exactly. There's so many times I'm like, ah, oh, I hope Jen got a picture of that. Right. Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and most of the time it's not like that though. And 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 I will reflect after the fact and be and think to myself, was it because I didn't jump right or was it because Baloo was trotting? I'm having a problem right now with Baloo not cantering and I created my own problem because when I was learning to vault you know not that long ago I didn't yeah. really vault my first year in novice um I was scared too so I just didn't um you know I was slowing him down because he kind of knew what he was doing because he had games before but he also had that anxious energy so it was more of like a rock and a takeoff yeah than like just cantering um so I had to slow him down a lot and I think I screwed myself a little bit because now he's like, oh, mom wants me to try it. Like, and, and now being an open, I'm like, no, I want you to now go. You got to push him. And <laughs> right. I was in the same place, I think, with Hero too, and having issues with my vaults. And he would kind of bulk a little bit, but my vault was literally so weak that if he did anything slightly awry, like I would be on the ground again. And then he would be yeah. like, oh my God, I did something wrong. And it just like escalated the wrong way where me not being able to vault 
lent to him having like little anxiety attacks over me trying to yeah. vault. And then I really couldn't vault because he wasn't cooperating. And you almost have to like break down the fundamentals again. Like that's where winter is so good. It's like our, a great time for you to just choose like one skill each time you go out and kind of just drill it a little bit. Yeah. But um, definitely that's going to be one of my focuses still with Hero is like sending out because you're right. I did the same thing. I would always be on his face because I'm panicking because now I know yeah. I can't get up. Yep. <laughs> You just kind of got to rebuild that. So I'm excited, though, because I did over the summer do some work with it. And you're right. Like, there's a couple of times where you get the jump and you're like, yeah, oh, chef's kiss. Like, it's so good. <laughs> and it feels so good. I remember looking through Carly's TikTok as she was um, like training to vault, you know, better and quicker and more efficiently and watching you know, your progression videos, Carly, from the beginning of the way you used to do it and the just the the time and the effort and the practice you and Remy put into it, right? Like he has to cooperate as well. Like he has to want to listen to you. <laughs> yes. And he has or to want to show up. Yeah. Right. The brain has to be on. You know yep. what I mean? Like and if they're not feeling it, like there's only so much I can do. Baloo didn't feel like vaulting the other day and he literally kicked me in the leg. Like he was mad at me and he just pulled up his back leg. I was like, ow, okay. Forget it then. <laughs> you know, but I listened to him and I was like, all right, he's not like, I, I'm probably tugging on his face or like I'm hitting like too hard in the saddle. Like he's getting annoyed. So I had to stop, right? You know, you got to listen to him. But anyway, Carly, watching you like progress in and I know it feels like such a long time for you probably, but truthfully, it was only like a couple months. Like you went from scrambling to get on to, in my opinion, being the one that hits the vault every time. Like it oh, looks yeah. like you're, you're floating. Like the way that I know how it feels when I hit it right, that's how I see you vault now. <gasps> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> it was definitely, I think. So good you like had to go out and there was like a lot of concerted practice like for sure that yeah. was like the focus yeah I remember I mean we got together a couple times even this year and b before this year like last year we got together where it's just like we're just gonna focus on vaulting today because we need this and yeah. Remington I think that part of of the games finally clicked for him this year and I think mm -hmm. that because hand in hand like I started to trust him more because he bucked me off really hard last year when I vaulted and like almost threw me into a fence and so I like lost some trust there for a little while and um it took all winter for me to regain that and then finally it like clicked in his brain like oh like this is normal this is what mom wants me to do yeah. and at that point like that's when I was able to start like implementing that while we were at a games competition. Cause he just acts yeah. so, I feel like ponies act so different when they go to games competitions where yeah. it's like, really yeah. hard to practice with them in that kind of environment and mm -hmm. have like that practice mentality of being like, it's okay if yep. you don't make your vault or it's okay, it's fine. So even doing like Genevieve's like fun pairs competitions of this year has been really, really helpful because he thinks we're competing, but yeah. I don't care about points. Exactly. So it's kind of like helped confuse him a little bit. Like, oh, mom's being so patient with me today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. It's like validating for him too. You know, they need yes. to feel that for sure. Right. So what are your goals for next year with Baloo? So every year that i've officially been riding in mgaa you know besides covid i have moved up a division so i started in novice just the beginner and then went to intermediate two years you know later um and then now i'm in open so which is crazy impressive you moved up <laughs> literally a division per year like that's amazing yeah. so many people have um complimented me on my growth as a games rider and Baloo's growth in the games and just like being an overall horse. So he had done games before. So I struggled a little bit because I was new to it and he had the general idea of, you know, run fast, run straight. And I, that was foreign to me. So I never thought, and if you would have asked me a year ago, like when I was going into open, I would have told you that I wasn't like, I had no intentions of ever going, not ever, but I had no intentions at the time ever getting into open or 
feeling that I was competitive enough or good enough for a lack of better words to be in open. And it wasn't for any reason in particular. Um, I just like, it was just a confidence thing, I guess, you know, in, in myself and Baloo and our capability, you know, together. So I never had any, any goals until this year. Like I just was having fun, right? It was just fun and it still is fun, but now being in the top division, the most competitive, the fastest division, um, with the, the most, I guess the most experience, right? Over 25 has, you know, I guess most of them have more years of experience, but the, these open riders that have been riding for five plus years in the open division, right? Now I watch them and I watch the things that they do and the speed that they do it at. And my goal is to now not care as much. Like, I care too much about being, like I said earlier, I didn't want to be the weak link. Yeah. I didn't want to be the one that messed up every race. And that's what I told myself. And I, I, I told myself like, oh, I'm not fast enough and Baloo's too crazy. Right. And, you know, I, I wasn't trying to necessarily make excuses, but they also, it also is kind of making an excuse because I could always, I, I had the time to go out and practice more and I, I could have gone to group lessons with other people I just was making excuses and it was because I was scared because I cared too much so my goal for n next year is to not care as much and to just like to just do the things that I was scared of doing before and just try it you know and if I don't do it well or if I mess up then I then I can look to somebody to ask for guidance and assistance yeah. like it, I used to be embarrassed to ask for advice on like, oh, well, first of all, how do you think I did on that? And how do you think I can do better? You know, yeah. I always needed a little bit of validation in it before I got the criticism because I was so self-conscious about my abilities. So now I want to just go out there and do it. And then when I mess up, look to somebody and say, I know I just did that poorly. What should I do? And not yeah. need that bit of like oh no you were fine like which everybody <laughs> gives us anyway right like we always yeah. hype each other right. up but I just want to ask people with more experience than me to get me out of my comfort zone because I think sometimes I hold Baloo back a little bit I think he could be a little bit more um competitive if someone who had more confidence in themselves were on him he'll never be the fastest one out there like he's he's a little pudgy you know like he's got little legs <laughs> like he'll just never be the fastest one out there okay you know so i know that but he definitely could be just better overall in a, in a more consistent way in a smoother way if i was more consistent and smoother and more confident well i think that's like that's one thing that was shocking to me going from idolizing people who are in the open division to actually integrating into the open division is how willing people are to give you constructive advice and how supportive they really are of you just getting better. Like, mm -hmm. I don't see a lot of like, you get intimidated and you're like, oh, if I say something like they're just going to see me as being that person who I like, couldn't do yeah. mug shuffle. And then you look <laughs> at someone like Reagan who can literally just do it at a dead gallop every single time. And it's flawless. Yeah. Like it just is their skill and they're good at it. But it's like, those are the people we need to learn from. And the only way that we're yeah. going to learn is if we like point it out that like, I'm not there yet. Yeah. And you're right. Like it's almost, it shouldn't even be a confidence thing so much as like, we should see the little successes for what they are. You know, they're building blocks to get to that point yeah. and then just keep focusing on improving that. Well, when I popped my first balloon, right, like that was something Baloo was so scared of. Um, and that was just, we don't know where that came from because he used to pop balloons when Jill rode him. Um, and then he was just so deathly terrified of them, like would, would shake, right? It was Aww. so, it was awful. We did a lot of exposure therapy over COVID with balloons. <laughs> and popping my first balloon, it was the, in a competition setting was the most heinous thing I had ever seen in my life. Like I watched the video back and it's just, it's so ugly, right? Like he's, he's like dancing this, like this, <laughs> and then he just bulges and I'm throwing myself to pop the balloon. <laughs> the stick. Like I'm like finger pinching the end of the stick and I, and I got it. 
And like, it didn't matter that it was ugly because I, I got it. Yeah. I couldn't even get near it before. And then so many people, I, this was in the intermediate division at this point. So many people cheered for me on other teams, other parents, spectators, like, cause they knew how difficult it was for me to do. They always saw me being the last one out there trying to get within, you know, like 20 feet of the balloon board. And to be able to do that to now, he doesn't even really think like twice. At it. Sometimes he's kind of like, oh, it's all that there. Like that was <laughs> a little bit, you know, but he, he doesn't really overreact to it much anymore. And now that I say that, he's going to, he's going to next time. Right. But like, <laughs> just like, you know, pe- so many people believed in me that I'd be capable of doing it. Even when I told myself, I was like, oh, maybe we'll just never be able to do balloon. And that's okay. But yeah, I was determined to be able to get him over his anxiety and fear of it because obviously something happened to him that caused him to be fearful of this and that's terrible you know so I wanted to make that a better situation and experience for him and I also was just determined to do it because I couldn't yet yeah right like I want I want to be able to do everything and I don't have to do it well I don't have to do it pretty but I want to be semi-successful at everything that I attempt to do right yeah like that's just the whole point of you know, the, each division, you, you start somewhere and then you get a little bit better. So now you move up to here and you know, you're bottom of the totem pole again. And then eventually you're going to become top dog and then you go to the next one. And yep. it's just neat, like to see the progression of people and ponies and the skills that we get good at and things I never thought were things that I could even do on a pony. You know, when you think about like two, I love that you mentioned like the cheering and I keep coming back to it because I think it's something we should always keep highlighting how cool it is when you're out there competing. Even if you're an experienced rider who's been doing it for years and years and years and you hear, I just remember I was out there on Hero and I like was coming up and I had done, I think I was doing five flag, but I heard like some of the born feral kids on the side of the arena. (laughs) And as I was coming up, they're like, you got this, Jen, you could do this, Jen. And then I got my skill and they're like, yeah, we knew you could do it. (laughs) And like, But like when you're out there, you hear it and it's so encouraging because you're right. You're like, all right, other people believe in me. I can do this. Like it just gives you that boost. And there's so many people in games that are actively looking to do that for you. And if you're not comfortable cheering on the sidelines yet, like I encourage you to, because it helps everyone. It's just, it's such a boost in energy and confidence. And even when I mess up, right? Like, yeah. like, <laughs> it's okay. You tried, but you did great. Yeah. <laughs> and then you laugh because you're like, I did try and I did all right. Like, it's not, you know what I mean? We're not not in the Olympics. We're not winning any yep. money or anything. Like it, right. it really all it is just for fun and just mm-hmm. for, you know, the, the friendly competition, you know, we don't get anything out of it besides fulfillment of being with each other and being with our, our horses and doing something that we all share a love for, right? Yeah. There's, there's friendly competition, but we're competing for, like a gift card or, you know, a ribbon. We're not, you know, like, and it's at the end of the day, like, it's just, it's just for fun. And that's the best part about mounted games is that it's just for fun. And in my experience, everyone that I've ridden with and everyone I've spoken to just has fun. Like they always (laughs) have a good time, you know, even when it's raining and 40 degrees and I have four pairs of pants on or it's snowing or we get rained out or it gets canceled and we get bummed. Right. But like, then we all were hanging out in the barn and it's yep. <laughs> just great. Like, well, and you're all, right. All like around. it's, it's like such a, it's such a detox kind of like from the stressors of life when you go to the barn or you go to the competitions. I always know like when we have those MA weekends, I'm always like, all right, get through the week because then it kind of, it goes away. Right. We go to like our alternate world where there's a community yes. and a family and we all agree on something. And like, especially as you become an adult, And I kind of wanted to throw this as like one of the last subjects we talk about. But when you like grow up with games or with horses in general, and then you go to college and you graduate and or you're in college, the throes of college, that was also hard. You're still riding while doing school. Like, how do you make that work? And where is the value to you in in keeping the horses alive when it's so much work to do that? So I always like I was always around horses, right, growing up. So I have... um, that accountability and discipline in that sense of like being responsible for 
this animal. Um, I also have a dad who loves me more than anything in the world. So he gets up every morning and feeds them. Aww, uh, that's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out John. Um, wouldn't be able to do it without him. My mom too, right? Like, so they, they both, mainly my dad in the morning, but um, shout out to the game's school, parents, right? Yes. Like so oh many God. parents are out here supporting. I wouldn't be able to do this. Yeah. If it wasn't for them. Like, you know, I wouldn't be able to do anything if it wasn't for them, but um, the fact that they're involved too is great. But right. when I was at school, you know, I lived five hours away at first. And then I was only, you know, an hour away when I transferred. But I wasn't coming home every weekend anyway. You know, I had, thing, I had other things to do. And I also had, you know, college life to live. Like I wanted to go to the football games and the parties. My parents were yeah. like, that's okay. You know, you don't have to come home to be responsible for this. You know, be, be a kid, you know, be a college kid, have fun, you know, stay with your friends, do whatever. But then when I came home, then I picked up the slack. So, yeah. and especially now too, on like days that I have off or um, like, I don't have to get up as early. I'll say, I can do the horses in the morning for you, dad. You can sleep in. And you know, he's a cute creature of habit. So he's still like, well, I got to get up anyway. So I'll just do it. And I'm like, just let me be nice. <laughs> you know? But um, like, I, I wouldn't be able to balance life and horses if it wasn't for their assistance with that. And now, um, I graduated from undergrad and um, I moved home and then I moved four minutes away, literally into an apartment that's four minutes away. Um, and I still hardly came home at night to feed them because <laughs> I just suck. <laughs> um, but like my parents still just fed him, right? Like yeah. they, as, that was so nice of them. Like they should have told me to get my butt over and feed him. Like I'm right down the road. Um, but I was at the time and still am in grad school and yeah. I had classes and I had homework and I coach um, a middle school lacrosse team. And I was also teaching lessons at time. And now I'm student teaching this fall. So, you know, like I'm now not, I don't have an income. I'm just, you know, being a freeloader back at my parents' house and they, they <laughs> will feed him in the morning. And like, I do a lot of the, the nightly work and help out and stuff like that. And on the weekends and everything, obviously, but it has been, challenging at times to find joy in either like side of my life for a little while just because of like the amount of things that are going yeah. on with working and grad school and multiple jobs and sure. horses and then now student teaching and grad school and not getting paid and horses like sometimes I would be using oh i'm gonna go ride as an excuse to like not be looking at my homework or something and then i'd be riding but in reality i'm just sitting on blue like walk trot cantering and then i'm doing like, walking around. like i'm not really doing anything you know what i mean or i'd be thinking about like oh, i have so much work i should be doing and not actually improving myself out there with him so i was never like i was half in like each like pot right yep and I started to hate like everything, right? Like yep. I was like, oh, well, I don't even enjoy writing right now because like I'm not getting anything out of it. And I'm like, oh, well, I, I hate school now because it's all I've been doing for the past 20 years. Like uh -huh. so I had to, <laughs> I had to find like the, that middle ground of, and it's still, you know, there's days still where I'm like, the last thing I want to do is get out in the cold and, you know, yeah. ride yeah. blue. But the last thing I want to do is get up and go to work. But... <sighs> The, but that's adulting, you know, it's like yeah. learning to balance and almost like you start to, you go, I think every adult has gone through the grudge stage where you're like, I hate everything. <laughs> like, work yeah. sucks. Ponies suck. And it all does because it's just all overwhelming. And it's like, you can't yeah. step back and like focus on what aspects of it bring you joy or yeah. be intentional about your time. But eventually mm -hmm. I feel like we all kind of come back to, okay, how can I be intentional? So I'm invested in all yeah. the things at the same time. <laughs> And Carly asked me earlier, like, what my favorite part about Mounted Games was or, like, competition weekends in general. And your previous question and that question really go hand in hand with the fact that, like, I get to leave everything behind when I get to the competition, right? Yeah. And it's not even the competition that's my favorite part. It's seeing all of you guys and, like, hanging out right yeah. and yeah. laughing at stupid things on the sidelines or like I talked to Jesse Fendora about teacher things or like um I talked to Azaria about college stuff and um I'm trying to think of just like other examples the, the feral kids right they're like 12 years old and 
they the look feral kids. Me. They look <laughs> me. <laughs> like I'm some superhero. And I'm like, you guys are like not like you're half Aww. my age. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like I'm not like I'm not some you know, a, I'm not an, an adult, like, you know what I mean? Like, I was just your age yesterday. It feels yeah. Like. Yeah. It's just, it's so, I feel like, I don't know. I literally just dropped my shoulder as I was thinking about it. I literally oh. get in the car and I'm like, okay, like, here we go. Like, it's time to go have fun. And it's yep. time to see the people I love and the people I only get to see once a month. So you cherish seeing everybody more than, right? You yeah. know, like, I always think like, oh, I should say, closer in contact with like xyz but you know you don't need to because we're all adults we know that like life is hard and you know that there's other responsibilities and i don't have time to like small talk with everybody all the time even though i want to because i love them and i love hearing about everybody's day like it's just hard so getting to the competitions and on the way up i have multiple people messaging me asking when i'm getting there and like oh i miss you i'm like oh my gosh like i'm so excited you know and then (laughs) it's not even the competition part like it's not even the writing it's it's getting to be with people that i want to so like to be surrounded by like you guys are the people that i hope like you were saying jen earlier generations of writers like i hope i have kids and i get to bring them with me i hope i'm still able to do this as i get older and then you know maybe they'll be able to watch this one day and like it's just neat and then my parents hopefully they're still riding and then it's like grandma and grandpa ride too like (laughs) and everyone's just everyone like it's just it's just one of the best things that has ever happened to me in my life was getting involved with mounted games and it's it's still all thanks to elise like we my whole family wouldn't be involved with this if it wasn't for her and it it has made us better like people in general just because of the people that we meet and the connections that we've made and the responsibilities we've had to you know take on as you know you're you're voluntold to do you know volunteer right (laughs) right right right. you know like (laughs) like you know and it like creates a family it does it does I feel like some of these kids and and people got me involved, right? And I've got people involved. I Eden, who's one of the feral kids, like I got her involved. You know, someone else brought her to the Twilight's game, but she really didn't have any interest, she says, and her mom will say too, like, until she rode Baloo and until she met me. Aww. And she's the reason I still ha- I have this poster. I should have dug it out. It's in it's hanging in my closet right now. Um she made me this poster. She I I guess she was Aww. 10 at the time now. And it says, like, go Catherine on it. She didn't know that my, like, full name was Caitlin. <laughs> Kate, like, she just assumed, which I think is so cute. Like, I love it. <laughs> and, like, little 10-year-old her made that for me. Or maybe she was even nine. I don't know. Made that for me. And now she's writing better than I am. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> And it's just cool. And then one of my best friends who has ridden horses for a couple years in, when she was a kid and then stopped because of sports, I got her back into it. And she came to a Paris competition with me during COVID, the the Halloween one at Grange. And we're mm-hmm. hoping she can ride at Fred's Pairs in April. And like, I'm just trying to find her a horse so she could jo- like fully join us. But it's just, it's cool. Like how... I now have these connections and I, and I look to you guys as like older sisters, almost like I could, I text Carly at the randomest of times, the randomest <laughs> of questions, things like, and I, Jen, I ask you the randomest of questions too about things. And when I was like, Hey, I might be moving down to your area. Like I just invited myself right into your lives. Right. But like you accepted it because that's just who we are. And it's, I, it's I, like, I'm yeah, I was, you know, because my family, they ride and they compete and I'm the same way. I'm like, I think of it like generationally, like you just want to keep like building on that, but it, you're right. It's so encouraging. I still have like a little card from the twins that are in the area, Carrie's kids. Um, they wrote me like this little note and they were like, thank you for hosting like the boo bash and stuff. And, and I just like have it on my fridge and it's so sweet. And I know my husband, he'll look at it. He's like, that's so cute. Like who did that? And I get to tell him, like, we have like all the kids in the organization. He's like, Mm -hmm. you know, it's not like horse racing. You're not making like a hundred thousand dollars. Why do you guys, why are you all so committed? Why do people come down from Canada just to ride with you guys? (laughs) And (laughs) right. And it like start to think and like, it's the community. It's the escape of being with a group of people that just love and support you and want to see you be better. And you're right. Like 
you don't have to stay in touch while you're apart because you're just living your life. But then when you meet, like everyone just wants to know, like, how are things going? How did your yeah. you know school go? How did your career like? It's so cool to come back and bring just like fullness to the equation. And then we yeah. can all leave and we know that they'll be there for you. And honestly, yeah. out of the blue, if you just message these people randomly that you've written with once, like half the time they're like, all right, like, what do you need? Like, yeah, it's so cool. It's, I, I, it's really, like I said, and I, I don't mean it lightly. It, this organization was one of the best things that could have ever happened to me in my life. And I hope and pray that like at our meeting, we were talking about like our growth and everything and how much we've grown and how we hope we continue to, I, I will fight tooth and nail for this organization to continue, yep. right? Like there will be claw marks on it. Like if it, it has <laughs> to be let go, right? Like I, I'm going to be knuckle deep, right? I like, think you and everyone else feels exactly yeah. the same way. Cause like this organization was also life-changing for me. Like, you know, I don't have a family that's into sports or animals or horses or <laughs> anything. So I like kind of like just came up you know, from nowhere. Yeah. And the errands kind of like mentored me into this until I'm finally like, well, I want to do all this by myself. I want a truck. Yeah. I want a trailer. I want to, you know, da, 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 da. like I want to do all of this stuff. So now it's just me and Tommy against the world. Yeah. But we, <laughs> we basically it. are just like, it's all because this organization has just like given me the confidence mm -hmm. to be able to be like, this, this is where I belong. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's so many people who are new in the organization or younger or just graduated college, like people get concerned and they're like, oh, we talk about growth, but is anyone willing to pitch in? I think that there is a whole generation of riders that really will. Yeah. I genuinely yeah. think people yeah. believe in the organization and in growing it and bringing more people into the fold, the family, right? You look back in 10 years, it'd be so cool if we've like tripled in size from where we are yeah. today. Well, think about like the hoax have two kids and you know, Kristen and Carl have two kids now and Rachel Crowley has two kids now. And I, I'm sure there's other people, right? Uh, Kira has two, yes. two babies, right? Yeah. Like we're literally just like breeding the next generation of beef riders <laughs> and it's awesome. Like, <laughs> like, I think we need to keep like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, Carly, you and Tom both like <laughs> oh rode, right? God. So you're gonna have like super babies and like <laughs> Val and John rode their whole lives. So like freaking look at Dexter <laughs> and Paxton, I know. right? Like I know. They're unreal, okay? And that's just gonna keep but that's just like the way it works, right? And I I hope that just keeps happening. Like because it just it's just such I wish I had, had this my whole life, right? Like yeah. I think I, like I I just think that I would have had such better experiences with horses if I would have had this my whole life. Right? Woulda, coulda, shoulda, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it is what it is and it was what it was, but this is something that I want the people that I love, whether it's friends or a significant other or kids like to be also be involved in, yeah. right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Side note. Um, I'm, talking that not, not, I don't want this on there necessarily, but I'm talking to somebody and I had him come over and get on a horse for the first time. And I had him do like mug shuffle as I'm walking next to Baloo. And he was like, this is so cool. And I was like, oh, you have She's no plotting. Idea what I'm trying to do. Like, <laughs> oh. like, I'm like, future popsicle pairs partner. Like, <laughs> like you no, know what I mean like it's funny <laughs> it's it's and you're right though it's like a lifestyle and making sure that someone is willing to support that either you going at it or like you're going to be away for six weekends plus a year yeah. you know and you're just and you like can come gone with me if you want to <laughs> exactly like, you don't have to but you're more than welcome to like but you don't have to right if yeah. it's not like your your thing like I I have some friends that are you know 40 years old in mana games that have husbands or wives that don't like don't come right yep. because that's not what they're into and like, that's right. fine you know what i mean you don't, have, you don't have to yeah. share the same interest as long as yeah as long as you don't make fun of me for you know being a horse girl when i'm you know still <laughs> 75 years old like you know i will live eat breathe it till i die okay like it's just never going away <laughs> so we're coming up on the top of an hour any closing thoughts oh my gosh yeah Sorry, guys. I talked. No, to I'm telling you. I told you the time no. flies. Like when you get everybody in a room this together and you start talking, we have so much fun that you don't even yeah. notice. <laughs> so, any closing thoughts? Anything that you didn't touch that you want? I think just continuing with like sort of what we've talked about, and a lot of what you guys highlight in your uh, your other um, episodes is just like you can be 
anyone and you can come from anywhere and you can have like next to nothing or you know more than everything and still be a part of this organization and still be invited and welcomed and like encouraged right you know i love that i don't have to be the best at a b c and d and i don't have to be the fastest and i don't have to have the fanciest pony and i don't need to be the tallest like it's it's an advantage to be a little bit shorter sometimes right like that's the first time that has ever happened in my life and i don't need a big fancy truck and i don't need a big fancy trailer and i and i don't need the newest helmet and the newest saddle and like you know i don't we don't need all of that like most of the other disciplines in the horse world in encourage i guess i don't want to yeah. say that they need those things either but that you're made to think that you, you need all of those things right i was made to feel and and believe that i needed the off the track thoroughbred or the imported you know warm, warm blood. blood and i needed the the dually and the the gooseneck and like you know and and the expensive jacket and, and the new fancy helmets and like i always wanted the new thing because that's what everyone else had now that's like the last thing i want because you realize like it's not the materials that like make it what it is it's the people like yeah. I, and i said that so much but we all are so inclined to help each other like not only when we're when we're you know lacking something but especially when we're doing super well like we are always so connected and inclined to either like enforce that that awesomeness that we have <laughs> or like be a crutch if someone's lacking somewhere or you know falling behind in something and i just feel like i personally have never been able to say that about another organization sport. yeah about and, and about any sport for that matter god i've played them all right and i've done a bunch of different riding disciplines i have never met such a group of people who are more welcoming and more determined to be welcoming and inviting and just have this pure love and enjoyment for horses like yeah. and for each other right it's just everything is just so happy and warm and you know there's some people that will disagree with that and that's fine like and if you don't feel that way about this organization like if you have a like a negative viewpoint on it like i, I feel so sorry for you like i don't like i i, I want to help you not feel that way like i don't know why i've heard people have negative things like jen you were saying about you know so, people always have something to bag on the organizers about like oh well they could have done this or like yeah they could have done that and it's like can we say thank you for even doing it in the exactly first like, <laughs> yeah it's just yeah. open you there know, like, yeah like and it's okay to complain about things like believe me i've done i did it all day today but like <laughs> we need to recognize that like everyone just wants to give everybody else the best weekend or the best yeah. day or the best experience right, exactly. so we really are always looking out for each other i feel at least just more encouragement, more praise. But when I joined the board, it was almost like the doors were open and I realized all the things I didn't know. Cause I, before yeah. I joined, I didn't know what I didn't know. And yeah. then when I was like joining on the board, I was like, Whoa, so much stuff goes on behind the scenes that people yeah. have no idea. It does like a yeah. massive perspective. And then you realize like how big all of this stuff is and then how things actually, you know, get moving or take place or why these different rules or decisions are made. But yeah, I think the plan is to like create more committees and all kinds of stuff yeah. going forward so i'm on all of them i'll be yeah. there yeah Dude, i was gonna I say it. we just get it. a good team together because yeah. for sure take the passion forward yeah. Yeah. yeah and you're right i mean if you want to see change in the organization like get engaged i think that's the biggest thing get engaged either by just praising your organizer giving them good feedback constructive mm -hmm. feedback reaching out to the board of governors in a positive way if you have something that you want to see change then please like apply to be on the board and if you don't get yeah. accepted that year go the next year like do it again yeah i mean just getting there's also there's also things like i set up a demo right at my local 4-h center i yes. knew the girl and like i didn't ask anybody for permission for that first like i kind of just said hey you know like 
I'm co- I, it was a Jim Connor thing. And I said, by the way, like, I know you have this whole event going on. Like it was a 4-H fair. Right. And I said, you know, I ride amount of games. Like she, the girl, the woman, the girl, the woman kind of knew about like our organization and stuff. I said, you know, if you ever need anybody, like you need to fill a slot anywhere. Like I, I know a few people, like I got you. Right. <laughs> and, um, she literally was like, can you come in two weeks? And I was like, sure. And then I called Fred. <laughs> I was like, hey, Fred, uh, can I do this? And he was just so impressed that I even took the initiative, right, to, like, set it up. And Devorah did the same thing. And, like, Val's done it and Chris has done it. Like, right. you guys have done it. You know what I mean? But, like, I felt, you know, not to toot my own horn, but, like, I'm new to the organization and yep. I'm only 24 years old. And I took the initiative to set this up to try to grow the, yeah. like get the grow the program and get more people involved without even like thinking that I had to, I just was like, Oh, this is what I should do. Just because share. I, like doing this. I want to share my love for it. And it was super successful. And like, we got a couple of people really interested and, you know, they asked us to come back next year and be the headliner for the 4-H sh- like show. Like they were like, we're going to put you at the top of the thing saying, this is the demonstration you want to come for. That's awesome. And that was just super, like, I felt super accomplished and validated in not only like my success as a mounted games writer and a writer in general, but like in my accomplishment of setting it up, like setting it up and organizing it organizing it and pulling it off right yeah like Fred wasn't around right yep. our president so I had to go get the equipment by myself and the equipment was actually at Carl's house and Carl didn't have the time to grab out the things for me that he needed so I went over in a literal downpour like tsunami <laughs> storm and for an hour and a half was in his front yard <laughs> pulling out the equipment that I needed, putting it on my landscaping truck. I was soaked to the bone, right? Wow. And it was hard getting all that stuff out of there. It's packed in there. So I'm digging through like, and then, you know, I trailered it home and then I brought it to the competition and then I trailered my horses there and like made, got everybody like put on Facebook 17 million messages. Like, please, somebody come do this with me. Like, I really want to pull it off. And people came and the fact that people saw that I was organizing something and was like, I'm going to go one, I want to do it. And I'm going to go help Kate, like set this up. Yep. Like, that was awesome that they wanted to do that. And then everyone was so proud of me. And you know, the validation is awesome. Like to be like, Oh, you did a good job. I'm like, thanks. Like, <laughs> well, until right. you actually organize something, you don't know how hard it is really. Oh my God. And, and how much work demo. goes into it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, I was like laying in bed, the right? I'm laying in my bed right now. I was laying in bed, like sweating the night before. Like, <laughs> did I type up like a good enough, you know, monologue for my mom to read to everybody? And do I have a good playlist? And oh my gosh, did I grab all of those things? And I couldn't find the, the buckets for something. So we had to last minute implement it with something else and like is everybody definitely going to come and is jesse going to bring the jerseys like it was stressful it was just a demo at my local little rinky dinky town 4-h center right i am in schwanksville middle of nowhere like (laughs) and it was still stressful like let alone nationals like when krista runs nationals and stuff i I would die right i just like yep you just constantly like it reminds you when you do any like little organizing, you're like, man, how do Krista, Stacy, like Anita, Patty, yeah, Anita, all of them. how do they all do this? Like, and know. they keep their composure and they manage to handle like the negative criticism and feedback. I was say, and- on top of people complaining about exactly. That, right? like, <laughs> yes. like, how do you take that? How do you carry that on your shoulders and go, you know what? Yep. It's fine. I'm going to do it again next year. Yeah. Like, yep. And I'm still going to get you gift cards. Like, exactly. Yes. <laughs> <You're so laughs> I mean, so shout out to the organizers. Without organizers, we wouldn't have the organization that we have. We wouldn't have the places to show up and have this community. So we need to continue con- encouraging organizers, supporting new organizers, giving positive feedback wherever we can. And we are coming up over an hour here because yeah, this has been a wonderful interview, honestly. I love your energy so much. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you guys for having me. I had a great time. Thanks, Katie. I'm so glad you like randomly text me and you were like, can I come on this show? It just worked out perfectly. It's just such short notice, but you were a perfect little fill in for tonight and we had a blast. Yeah. And we'll Thank definitely you. have you on for a live sometime because I feel yes, like the energy is there. <laughs> I love it. It'll be a lot of fun. All right. Well, anybody, if you watch this and you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, go on our YouTube, go on our Facebook. We have Instagram. It helps us a ton if you would follow us with a subscription or a like. Um, all that matters so that you can track our next episode of Uncharted Talk. Genevieve here, Carly, Kate, thank you so much for joining us.
Thank you, guys. You're listening to Unbridled with your host, Genevieve and Carly. Welcome to Unbridled. <laughs>